Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending the Activating True Sport webinar, where we explore tangible ways of using True Sport to strengthen community initiatives. Uh, we had a great time putting this together with Casey, who's a manager of sport and community engagement, and Danielle Sear, uh, an Activate alumni and a True Sport champion. Um, before we get started, I have some housekeeping to do. Uh, I, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge that the webinar series is a part of Motivate Canada's Physical Literacy Youth Leadership Project, funded by the Government of Ontario Sport and Recreation Community Fund. Uh, everybody will be muted, but we encourage you to ask questions or participate in the chat box. I'll be monitoring that throughout the webinar. Uh, also, this will be recorded and be sent out and posted online on the Activate Action website and be as a resource uh, online. Uh, just to give a brief introduction of myself, I'm Bias Bacani, and I'm a previous Activate alumni. Um, I attended the Activate National in 2015, where I met Casey. Uh, she came out with a lot of energy, and it was very, um, I guess, engaging. And then I, I ended up being an, um, a volunteer at the Activate Ottawa, where you can also see Casey very excited over there, the Activate National and the Activate Toronto, um, where I attended as a staff at that time. Uh, also, for those who don't know who Motivate Canada is, we're a national not-for-profit organization that envisions a world of empowered youth between the ages of 16 and 29 who are active, healthy, confident, and community-minded, and uh, they inspire to lead, cha lead change in their community. Essentially, we believe in the potential of youth. There are four core programs at Motivate Canada, including the Activate program. That brings youth leaders from different communities together, usually around a youth leadership forum. Uh, the Gen 7 program does some very similar work, but uh, for Aboriginal youth, youth um, <clears throat> the STEAM team is a national goal-setting program that brings Olympic, Paralympic, and national caliber athletes to schools in Canada to inspire young people to set and achieve their goals. And lastly, the the Clean Air Champions, similar to the STEAM team, brings high caliber athletes to educate youth about healthier and active lifestyles and a more sustainable environment. Uh, we're ha happy to have everybody on this call, including activators uh, from across the country. And um, lastly, uh, this webinar series um, is one of the initiatives to becoming a certified youth driven development expert. Um, to do that, uh, firstly, you have to attend or participate at Motivate Canada Youth Forum, either an Activate or a Gen 7 one. Um, then you can also participate in the five to six webinars that uh, we are holding, where we will be hosting a few more in the next few months. And lastly, uh, we will you have to complete an Activate Action project or host a youth forum that may qualify as your Activate Action project. And you can become a certified youth driven development expert. Last but not least, um, just to get the webinar started, I will introduce Kaylee, or Casey, sorry. Thanks, Bias. And I'll know, although we've known each other for some time now, I guess Bias is still having trouble with my first name, but that's all right. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, thanks so much for, for having us. We're super excited to be here today. Um, like Bias said, we've been working with Motivate on a number of their initiatives over the years, so I've become quite familiar with all that is youth driven development and all that is Motivate Canada and I'm inspired each and every time that I'm out working with a variety of different youth groups associated with Motivate Canada so we're honored to be here today. So um, some of you out there may know what True Sport is, some of you may be hearing about this for the first time but hopefully by the end of today you'll all have a sense of um, not only what True Sport is but how it might impact the work that you do going forward and how it might help to strengthen your Activate in Action projects or how it might bring a new perspective to the work that you do in um, your community day to day. So just to go over a bit of an overview and agenda for today, um, I'm going to be talking a lot about um, who we are, who we are as True Sport, what we do as True Sport, what our mission and vision is. Um, again, we'll speak to how we work together collaboratively with Motivate Canada across the number of their initiatives. Um, 
we'll talk a little bit about how TrueSport can support your Activate in Action project, how you can really use it as a tool to strengthen the projects that you're already working on, or again, how you can bring TrueSport messaging into pre-existing projects to help define to your community how sport can be of value to the rest of the people in your community. Um, and probably the most exciting part of our broadcast today will be that we have alumni activator Danielle Sears. She's also a true sport champion, someone who I've um, grown very fond of over the years. And you'll get to hear firsthand experience on her um, take on not only being an alumni activator, but also how she's taken true sport, not only merged that with the work that she's done through the activate program, but also how she uses it to um, day to day in her in her sporting life, in her career. She's not only an athlete, but she's a coach. Um, and she also has had her hand at working at a provincial sport organization as well. So um, that'll be really exciting and hopefully you guys will have lots to take away from that as well. And before I forget, I just wanted to mention that there has been some handouts provided to you on the side there. So while we may not be able to go in depth on all of those handouts and all of those tools, I urge you to take a look at those. And if there's anything else that you're interested in or if you had any questions going forward, we'll provide our contact information at the end of the webinar. And please don't ever hesitate to get in touch with us um, to find out more about those. So we'll get started. To begin with, I thought I would let you guys know that um, TrueSport is part of a bigger organization called the Canadian Centre for Ethics and Sport, so, um, or otherwise known as here on out as the CCES. And some of you on the line may recognize the CCES as the guys who come and take um, sample collections from elite athletes to ensure that our athletes are competing in sport at the highest level in a clean way. So um, the Canadian Centre for Ethics and Sport here, we have a vision that sport in Canada is fair, safe, and open to everybody. And, hope, and the hope is that we would achieve that through three driving forces. So advocating for a sport that is fair, safe, and open. So really that means opening up discussions around some of the touchier subjects in sport. So some of those areas that may not be as black and white as doping and not doping, but maybe more around issues of trans inclusion or... Um, you know, some of those tougher topics, we really want to provide a platform to have those discussions happen. Um, we also, obviously, through the work that we do in True Sport, activate a values-based and principle-driven sport system. And I'll talk more about what that big word means, values-based and principle-driven. You'll hear me say that a lot today. And then lastly, obviously, through the work of the Canadian Anti-Doping Program, we um, hope to and work around the protection of the integrity of sport. So that really is ensuring that athletes are competing cleanly and fairly at the highest levels. So just to give you a little bit of information around, you know, where did True Sport come from? Was it this group of people sitting in Ottawa saying, you know, uh, we need this thing and we're going to call it True Sport and this is what it's all about. I just wanted to show you today that, in fact, that is not how True Sport was born. True Sport really was for the people, by the people type of idea. So there's been numerous studies involved, literature reviews, public opinion research polls conducted over the years. And I'm hoping to introduce just a few components um, through the following slides. And, of course, there's always more information and loads of resources available on our website. So I think we could start back as early as 2002, um, one of our original public opinion research polls. And of course, there would be a ton of data associated with this particular um, poll. But one of the most startling statistics, I think, was the fact that you know a large amount of Canadians, over 90%, really believed in sports capacity to contribute to the moral and character development of young people. I think anybody who loves sport knows that to be true. Um, but the alarming part of this particular statistic was that less than 20% of Canadians or those who responded to the poll felt that the current system we actually had was delivering on that promise. So you can imagine that um, truly the sport that we had here in Canada was not the sport that Canadians wanted. So I'm recognizing that this is a fairly old public opinion research poll, but wanted to give you guys a little bit of insight where this all started. Secondly, there was um, a symposium that we hosted here from the CCES called the Sport We Want Symposium. And at that symposium, we brought together Canadians from all across the country um, to discuss the values that Canadians wanted 
Canadians wanted to see in their community sports system. So that really was a conversation around, you know, if we could paint the ideal picture of what sport would look like in Canada, what would that look like and what would those values be? Um, so we were identifying the areas where community sport was not achieving its potential and the potential reasons why um, and started the dialogue to identify the change that would be required. So again, there are loads more information on the Sport We Want Symposium on the CCS website and happy to share that with anybody else who might be interested in what else happened at that symposium. But if we can take now a step back and say, you know, maybe model a bit of the conversation that happened at the Sport We Want Symposium and talk about, you know, what does sport look like when sport is good? When sport is good, you know, we think about the, the opportunity that every child deserves to continue, ex continually experience the joy and innocence of sport that has meaning. We want every, po every parent to see their child, child experience that joy and help bring the best bring out the best in them and help them discover their potential, um, not just physically but ethically and socially as well. Because we know that when sport is good, we all win. If you take a look at this next slide here, you can see a lot of thumbs up, a lot of smiling faces, a lot of encouraging coaches, sticks in the center. This is what good sport looks like. And I think if I asked any of you on the line what good sport feels like, we would all most definitely have a story that you know looked a little bit or maybe felt a little bit like some of these pictures here. It feels like a com it feels this is what sport feels like at the community level, that buzz of excitement that you feel. I don't know about anybody else, but there's a big Jays game on tonight. And again, if you saw me here today, I'm sporting my you know 25 plus year old Jays jersey with the hope that we might have a win tonight. So to me, that's what good sport feels like today. But just at the same time, you can recognize that when sport turns bad, it looks like any number of these, you know, sensational headlines around match fixing or hazing or assault or brawls in the stands. You know, at any given time, sport can be bad. When it becomes winning at all costs, that's generally when sport is bad. At the community level, it may, might be that premeditated check into the boards that leaves a child with an injury. It might be the decision by a coach to keep some kids on the bench, or it might be parents yelling at referees and at each other. When this happens, we all lose. And we also know that when sport stays bad over time, bad sport behaviors and practice can spread and eventually, and eventually serious ethical is issues can emerge, impacting sports from the grassroots all the way to the podium. So good sport often happens naturally on its own, but all too often it does not. And I think I've said this once, I've said it a million times, that Sure, good sport can happen all on its own. When neighborhood kids throw their sticks into the street to choose teams for a pickup game, generally these games are self-regulated and fair. However, it's not always the case as we've just previously discussed. Winning at all cost behaviors in sport can take a real toll on the system and prevent sport, good sport, from doing all of the good that we know that it can. So I just wanted to take a quick minute here um, and take our first poll. And I wanted to ask the audience, what percentage of Canadians do you think, when we asked them, when we polled them, we said, would you define your overall sport experience as positive or negative? So I just want to ask the audience, what percentage of Canadians do you think define their overall sport experience as positive? So I think we're all... We've got everybody's answers in, and we've got a 50-50 split, it looks like, 75% or 85%. It's, it's interesting because that answer is actually wrong, but I think I was just as alarmed as everybody else that those answers were actually wrong because it was actually a 50-50 split. 50% 50 of Canadians defined their sport experience as negative, while 50% defined it as positive. And for someone who loves sport, someone who is, you know, um, motivated by sport, passionate about sport, truly believes in the good that sport can do, I was alarmed at that statistic. So you might start to begin to understand why um, I wake up every morning loving my job, because I truly believe in the work that we have to do around true sport and about bringing that to life. So if I can take... One thing away from today, if I could reach into that computer, into this online sphere of people listening, and can convince each and every one of you that we all have a part to play in delivering true sport and ensuring that sport is positive, that will make me feel successful today. So 
how do we get to the sport that Canadians want? That's the big question. How do we create a community sports system that develops good people first and athletes second? True Sport is Canada's upstream approach to values education, and this is the education approach that we think will help close the gap that we revealed in our research. So if I click through to the next slide, you've heard me say values-based and principle-driven, and, and that's a big term, but I think if we break it down into the what. So when people say, what is True Sport? If we go back to that Sport We Want symposium, um, True Sport can be defined by the values that were developed by Canadians for Canadians at that Sport We Want symposium. True Sport is really guided by this set of values and also driven by a set of principles that we'll speak to next that can help shape a positive environment. Getting to True Sport is first and foremost accomplished by placing values at the center of our collective sport experience. And those values are of fairness, excellence, inclusion, and fun. These values can and should live at all levels in sport, from the community to the elite performance. They are mutually reinforcing. Make no mistake, values-driven sport absolutely includes winning and competing to be the best you can be. And this is the value that we call excellence. So when you step back and you think about sport, you know, the difference between sport and purely physical activity is that there is going to be a winner and there is going to be a loser. So make no mistake about it, true sport is certainly about winning. We're just not about winning at all costs. If we click on through to true sport principles, you could think of the principles of the as the how. How do we do true sport? How can we bring these values and principles to life? When we took the values to the field of play, we found that they may have needed further articulation. This can be easily articulated into the how. In some instances, it might be easier to articulate true sport without a discussion around the values. Because in my experience, values are a very personal topic. Um, telling somebody these are the values that your sport experience should be might be a more difficult approach than these are the principles that might help bring a healthy and positive sport experience to life. These principles are simple enough to be understood by everyone at all times, but they are not, however, so easy to live at all times. But by living these principles, um, that's when we will start to see the benefits of sport. The challenge to all of us is to get these principles into the water supply of sport. If we think of these principles as being contained within a larger circle, and if we talk about that circle as being sport at its best, we can think of them living all together in the right balance and proportion. And when that happens, that is when we start to see the benefits of good sport flowing. The challenge to all of us is, to, again, to keep these principles contained within this circle because when we start to overemphasize one principle over the next, so for instance, winning at all costs or taking an overemphasized um, approach or thought process behind the go for it principle, you can see that when it gets too big, there isn't enough room in the sport at its best circle for all of the other principles to stay living and to stay reinforcing within this circle. So in this particular example, you know, play fair might get bumped out of the circle. So that might mean, you know, we're cutting, cutting corners in the sport experience. It might mean doping. It might mean cheating in different ways. But we can see that it actually compromises the other principles and pushes them out. And in doing so, this type of behavior robs sport of how good it can be. But when sport is at its best, when the sport experience is reflective of the seven true sport principles in the right balance and proportion, we know that great things can happen. So let's take poll number two and ask out there, which of the following do you think will happen as a result of committing to true sport? So do you think we would start to see stronger, more inclusive communities, instilled character in youth, or increased opportunities for excellence if true sport was happening at the ground level. So it looks like everybody is saying 100% all of the above. And ding, 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 that is the right answer. So all of those things happen when true sport is, is in play. So we know that good sport can instill character in our kids. Sport gives our kids joy, gives them the opportunity to learn about themselves, about interacting with others, and about the achievements and disappointments that are a natural part of life. These lessons stay with our kids throughout their lives and shape their attitudes and behaviors. We can also imagine that a sport experience founded on the principles of true sport is a fabulous testing ground to practice these values and principles that they have learned at home, at school, in real life, in ever-changing situations of a sport experience. So if we think about that, the way I like to explain it is, 
if you're in the classroom and you're learning how to multiply, supply, multiply, subtract, add, all of those great skills, and then you take that to those great problems that you find in your exercise book when you have to go home in your homework, we can think of true sport as the same way. We can take those values and principles and those life lessons from our positive role models and then stick ourselves in a sport experience and then that provides us a great opportunity to practice what we've learned in a safe environment. Next, if we talk about the power of sport, true sport, to strengthen our communities. We like to say at true sport that the way we play together shapes how we live together. Communities that have a common set of values know what they stand for. They know what matters to them and they manage their decisions and interactions accordingly. Special relationships form on sidelines, in the stands, and en route to games and tournaments. And sport provides an opportunity for people to come together and meet others that they may not have otherwise known. There's so many amazing stories about people coming together from different socioeconomic backgrounds, from different cultures, from different religions, age groups, neighborhoods, all coming together around this amazing notion of sport. But we know that those relationships are going to be healthy and positive if the sport experience is healthy and positive. Lastly, we know that good sport and true sport can and will increase our opportunities for excellence. Competition is a part of sport and is what separates it from pure physical activity. When the seven principles are in play, more youth are inspired to play longer, increasing participation rates, and therefore increasing the level and challenge of competition for everyone. This in turn inspires those playing sport to push harder and reach further, stretching themselves to be the best that they can be. So I've spoken quite a bit now back and forth around these benefits of sport and I mean I could spend an entire webinar talking about this next slide but really what this is is sort of the cold notes of a report that we did in 2008 called the True Sport Report. And what that report told us in these five quick pictures is that when good sport is happening in communities there's going to be a wealth of benefits swimming into those communities that practice good sport. So again, we've touched on a few of them, but stronger, more inclusive communities. It's also going to help put life on a positive course. Um, good sport will help with economic development and renewal. If you think about major games or sporting events that happen in communities, they provide opportunities for merchants to come out and sell things, people take up rooms in hotels, and then visitors often are out purchasing and buying things in the community. Um, if we talk about the very obvious one around the improvement of health and well-being, those types of benefits that are associated with sport. And then lastly, maybe one that we don't think of so offhand, but the idea that good sport can provide this opportunity for us to promote environmental sustainability. Here at True Sport, we have an initiative that we call the True Sport Give Back Challenge. And one of the ways in which some of our True Sport member groups get out to give back to their community is by hosting clean up the park days. So it's this idea that we're lucky enough to have these clean and safe places for us to get out and play. And it's up to us to keep those places safe and clean as well. So back to the point of the idea that we, how we know that these benefits of good sport can happen. If we start again with the idea that true sport is happening and living and the values and principles are being promoted and that we think that if that's happening, we'll have good sport as a result. And if we have good sport happening, we're going to assume that there's a lot of positive experiences happening out there around sport. And if there's a good positive experience happening, that's, there's a better chance of people sticking around and coming back to play. So retention and more more participation. And if we have more participation and retention in sport, that's when we'll start to see those benefits of good sport roll about. So that was the piece of the 2008 True Sport Report, the nuts and bolts were that there are all these amazing things that sport can do, but the caveat was that it had to be good sport. Those sport ben those benefits of sport are not going to happen unless the sport experience is values-based and principle-driven. So poll number three. Moving right along. Which of the following groups cannot join True Sport? So we haven't really talked about True Sport being a membership yet, but it in fact is a membership. And I'm wondering, which of the following groups do you think are not allowed to be a part of True Sport? So if you think about some of the pieces that we spoke to earlier saying that, um, that some that I need everybody to rally around it, you can maybe take a look at this poll and I, I think we can see that most people have answered none of the above and that is in fact the correct answer. 
all people, all groups can join True Sport. And if we flip to this next slide, you'll see that in fact we have over 3,700 member groups who are part of True Sport right now, made up of schools, facilities, teams, citizens, sport organization. So True Sport is already taking hold at all different levels. There are over 3,700 member groups that are creating a movement towards good sport all across Canada. True Sport members are offering a sport experience that is consistent with the seven principles, and those members visit truesport.ca daily to connect with other like-minded individuals, to share, gather stories, tips, tools, resources, and to give themselves and others the inspiration and means to leverage the many benefits of sport. So if we take a look at this piece, you today, if this type of sport experience is in line with what you think and the type of experience that you want in your community, you can go to truesport.ca slash join and add your name to the list of people who believe in good sport, who believe in true sport. And then you're always welcome to take that one step further and try to get your city, your team, your school on board, or maybe even your facility to say, this is the type of sport experience that we want to see in our community. So while there's about 3,700 true sport member groups, you can imagine that having 200 communities coast to coast in Canada means that this number is actually reflective of about more than 16 million Canadians in total. So now to touch on a little bit more about the relationship between Motivate Canada and some of their initiatives, particularly the Activate program. So as Bai said, I met him way back when and I've been lucky enough to be involved with many national Activate forums over the years, but as well and more recently as this pilot program that we've been hosting here locally called Activate Ottawa. So really taking that forum down to a more um, central level, down to a more this community level and saying, who are these groups that we can reach out to and how can we help them um, help provide their youth with the tools and resources necessary to bring some amazing Activate and Action projects to life. So obviously we believe in youth-driven development here at True Sport and nine times out of ten most, most youth that we speak to, True Sport really speaks to them, speaks to the heart of what they do, speaks to the type of sport experience they want to see. And when you talk about good experiences and bad experiences, tons of youth can tell you that there are some not so great experiences happening out there. And they're sometimes the first people to stand up and say, I definitely want to change this. I want to do something in my community to make sure that more people are having a great experience. So um, Motivate has subscribed to the True Sport Values and Principles for a long time. And we're working really closely to see day to day how we can bring that more and more to life together. So I thought we would just drive home a bit of a checklist. If you walk away today and you say, okay, this is great, I love it, I believe in true sport, but what do I do? How do I bring this to my school? How do I bring this to my community? What are some easy ways to make this happen? I've, this, I've provided here a, a quick checklist to say, here are some quick, fast, five easy ways that you could bring true sport to life. So obviously, the first link there, the hyperlink, and we can provide it to you, but the website is www.truesport.ca and slash join and that's come to True Sport, join, put your stamp and say that this is the type of sport experience that you want. Second, take that information back, the information you've learned here today, some of the handouts I've provided. One of the helpful, super helpful handouts that were provided in the webinar is a simplified brochure of our True Sport story. So it tells in this really artistic, lovely read where True Sport came from, how it is alive and well, and will help articulate to your friends, your family, your neighbors, your colleagues, um, and your teammates what True Sport is and why they should do it. And we've also provided some links to a couple of tools that we'll speak to further on in the webinar, one being the True Sport Agreement, and this is a really neat resource and tool and a really great way to start to have the conversation around values and principles in sport. Thirdly, I've also provided a link to the True Sport Principles, might be something you might be interested in throwing up in your school to promote true sport principles and what you believe in and maybe just a quick reference if you if you can't remember how many true sport principles there are or what or what they mean um, also a simple way of showing your dedication or your commitment to good sport is the use of our true sport logo so they're up there free to download from our website take them use them um, we often say you know don't just throw the true sport logo up there but co-brand it with something that you're already doing so if you're part of a soccer club put your soccer club's logo right up there next to True Sport because the way we like to see it is that your soccer club 
has made the commitment to be true sport. It's your true sport logo, not ours. So we'd like to see as many people as we can out there waving the true sport flag, so to speak. And lastly, hopefully the true sport principles, the true sport values, the messaging, some of the some of the key messages that we've used here today, maybe they can help describe, help you describe the difference or impact your projects are making in your community. So when people ask you why do you need resources for this or why do you need help um, bringing this project together, why do we want to offer this experience to other youth in our community, maybe TrueSport can provide you with some language to help you better describe the impact that you're hoping to make. Here's some examples of some of the ways that the particular TrueSport brand is being used. So you can see anywhere from this is a national um, figure skating championship. You can see that the TrueSport logo is living there at some of the highest levels of sport. Um, so that was a good promotion for them to say, while we may be elite level athletes, we still believe in values and principles, again, from the playground to the podium. Um, over here you can see that this is our national women's ringette team and there's sporting the True Sport logos on their jersey and have done so for a long time now. Um, a lot of times in facilities you'll see the True Sport banners hanging in those facilities as a commitment to True Sport and the values and principles that they stand for. Over here is um, a, a curling rink. Um, and again, just a number of different ways to really show that. This is right there in the ice. People get creative with it. We have an entire province who's now working towards a provincial strategy around true sports to say, again, from playground to podium, from north to south, east to west, we want to tr see true sport alive and well in our province. And that's a provincial true sport strategy in Manitoba. So now I think you've heard me speak and speak and speak, and I'm going to pass it over to someone much more exciting than myself. I'd like to introduce Danielle Sear, who's not only a friend, but someone who I value her contribution to what she does for sport, what she does for true sport. Um, and she's had some amazing experiences that I really think will be valuable to all those of you who are listening today. So without any further ado, I'll throw it over to Danielle to talk to you about some real life examples on how she's brought some of this to life in her community. Sure, hi guys. Um, so to start off, just want to give you a little bit of background of how I became involved in Activate and how I found out about True Sport. Um, so for Activate, I found out about it in high school after I had an esteem team presentation at my school. Um, I ended up applying the next year, so at, once I got into my first year of university in 2011, I attended the forum as a delegate. I came back, absolutely loved the program, um, wanted some more, so I came back as a volunteer in 2012 and then again in 2013. And that's when I found out about True Sport was, was my first year involved in the Activate program in 2011. So for me, it was exactly what I was looking for and something I wanted to take back to my community. Um, I wanted to make sure that the sport that I was a part of in the community was a good sport that Casey was talking about. Um, so when I reflected on what I wanted to do for my Activate in, Active, uh, Activate in Action project, I started to think about, you know, what were my most positive experiences in sport? and how do I help create those experiences in my community. Um, so when I did reflect, um, some of those experiences, most of my favorite sport experiences happened because of a good balance um, in combination of the true sport principles. So one of those favorite sport experiences was definitely playing high school basketball. And so I went to a small school and uh, some of the high schools we played against um, were a bit further away. So these were some people that I would play it against that I wouldn't have met if I, if I hadn't been playing um, basketball with them. So Two of these teams ended up being Guysborough and Muscadabit. And even though we were playing against each other, we ended up becoming really good friends off of the court. So for me, that was a great example of true sport in action. You know, if it wasn't for that good sport that we created, so it was fair, it was fun, um, we always looked, we respected each other. So if it wasn't for that good sport, we would have never met. So once high school basketball ended, we, um, players on both, uh, all three of our teams went up staying in touch. So I decided that my Activate in Act, uh, Action project was going to be about hosting an alumni basketball tournament to bring back these three teams together, you know, to play basketball. And then we also decided we're going to use that positive experience to raise money for the IWK Children's Hospital. So a lot of us stopped playing basketball once we went to university. So for myself, when I went to university, I ended up playing uh, varsity soccer instead. So this was a really cool opportunity to come back, get involved in the sport that, you know, we loved in high school, um, but most importantly, be able to connect those positive experiences again. Um, so from my Activate in Action project, I wanted to keep working to bring true sport into my community. So like I said, when I went to university, I played soccer. So I went to Mount St. Vincent University, uh, where we're the home of the Mystics. Um, so as a varsity athlete, I had to keep thinking about, okay, how can I help to make sure that good sport happens in this environment as well? Um, 
So as a varsity athlete, you know, we have such a great overall experience and we get a lot of support from our community. So one of the things I thought about is, you know, how can we harness and encourage that positive experience to keep growing even beyond my own university team? Um, so one of the things that we did is that we focused on the True Sport principle of give back. So we took part in the True Sport Give Back Challenge. Um, so when we looked at our community, you know, we have over 24,000 people who use our food banks every year and almost 35% of those people were under the age of 18. So as athletes, we know better than anyone the importance of good nutrition. Um, so as a team, we decided on Halloween, we're going to partner with our rec society on campus and we went door to door collecting food donations for our local food bank. Um, so like I said, we had a lot of support from our community that year and we just wanted to give back and that's one of the ways we chose to give back. Um, so also as my involvement as a community soccer coach at Halifax City, um, one of the things that I wanted to do is, you know, I, I could impact that experience to have good sport as an athlete. How can I help my athletes um, choose to do the same thing? So how can they make sure that the experience they have is a positive one? Um, so one of the things we looked at is, okay, how, how could we make sure that every time we step on the field, we're going to take part in good sport? Um, so what I did, I helped facilitate the True Sport Agreement session. So I did it with an under-12 girls team that I helped coach and an under-14 girls team. Um, so in each session, we started with a team building event that focused on the importance of how we treat each other in order for everyone to have the best possible experience. You know, just kind of getting them in the mind frame of, you know what, how we treat each other, it is going to impact how we feel about this overall experience um, on a team together. Um, so we went on after we did those team building exercises just to talk about the different qualities and values um, that our team wanted to embody. So um, whether we wanted the environment to be respectful, friendly, um, fair, diff different things like that. And we also talked about, you know, what, what does success look like for us and what were our goals going to be for the summer, you know? So it wasn't just about winning a championship, but one of our goals at the end of the summer is we want every player to want to come, come back and play again. Um, so that was really important for us. So we talked about um, that and especially for, we highlighted, you know, like I said, success isn't just about winning. Um, so after that, we had all of our different values and um, different things that we thought were going to help us along the summer. We wrote them all down on chart, pe chart paper, like you can see on the screen here. And then all of the players got six stickers. So they got to choose their top six values that they thought were most important for us as a team for the summer. Um, so once we did that, we tallied it up and we looked at our top seven to ten values that they had chosen through their dot democracy. And once we had the values, um, the girls decided on a unique way that they're going to re represent their agreement. So every time we step on the field, you know, what's what's that reminder for us? Like, what's it what's it going to look like? Um, so I had a couple of groups do a couple of different things. So one group I worked with, they put all of their values on a soccer ball. So when they got to the field, they took a look at the soccer ball, um, and that was an instant reminder for them. You know what? This is what we believe in. Um, I also had another team. This was pretty cool. That they decided, you know what? We're going to go to build a bear. So we wrote all of our values on the little hearts. Um, we put them inside the Build-A-Bear, zipped it up, got it a Halifax City jersey, and um, then after every game, the player that, that we thought best exemplified the true sport principles, they'd be able to take the, the teddy bear home. So it was pretty cool. Um, so I, if you're looking to kind of impact a team um, or even just a community group, the true sport agreement is a really great way to do that. Um, so I also, so outside of my role as a university athlete and as a soccer coach, um, I also wanted to bring true sport into my day-to-day -day job at Soccer Nova Scotia. Um, so I have a really cool opportunity is that I have the chance to spread true sport, you know, not just in my community here in Halifax, but across our whole province in Nova Scotia. Um, so we, st we started to kind of brainstorm what are some creative ways that we could do this. So we decided that we were going to create a true sport player of the year award um, at Soccer Nova Scotia, so that would reach across all seven of our regions, so from tip to tip across our province. So the award was part of our first ever Night of Excellence, and it recognized under 8 to under 12 players who embodied the true sport principles. So the purpose of the award was to highlight and kind of encourage ethical sport, um, but especially at those younger ages. And we had an awesome group of winners this year, um, really inspiring how they chose to live the true sport principles and to, to lead their communities. So that was a really great opportunity um, and activity that we did. Um, finally, uh, one of the best ways that I found to implement true sport in my community, you know, and it's, it's just to be a role model and to lead by example. So I try to live my life by the true sport principles and encourage those around me to do so as well. 
Um, this past summer, I had a, a really cool opportunity to work with the under-7 Canadian national team um, for soccer at an international tournament in China. So I'm really lucky to work within an organization like Soccer Canada um, that creates a culture that values good sport. So it was, it was a neat experience. And at the end of the tournament, after the closing ceremonies, you know, I was taking pictures of some of our Canadian players, and really one of the coolest moments happened. Um, players from China and New Zealand came over, and you know they wanted to speak with and get pictures with their Canadian players. Um, you know, most of the Chinese players couldn't speak much English, uh, but it didn't matter. They were able to connect with each other through sport, and that was because the whole tournament um, it really embodied those true sport principles. So for me, that was kind of like a wow moment, like something that that sport can bring together. Uh, so many people like that, you know, across countries, across language barriers. Um, and I really, really believe that true sport um, is a great way to make sure that happens. So that was just a little bit about my experience um, as a true sport champion and, and also kind of how I got started with Activate. All right, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Danielle. We really appreciate your valuable, valuable insight as not only a true sport champion, but also an activator, a past activator as well. And I've been lucky enough to kind of see you on all of those fronts. So I can say without a doubt, you definitely embody the true sport principles. And I think you've been extremely effective at bringing them to life in a multiple of ways. So um, thank you again for joining us. And we are beyond lucky to have you as part of our team, as I'm sure Motivate feels the same way about having you as a past alumni as well. So I think there's a couple of questions, but I don't know, we might wait until the end, Danielle, and there's a few specific to, to your section as well. Um, but we'll keep motoring through. So I just wanted to pull up a few of the specific tools and resources, again, that you're able to access, free for download, um, free for customization on the True Sport website. So again, www.truesport.ca. Um, and we'll just get into a couple of them. Danielle spoke to quickly around the True Sport Agreement. And, and really what that is is a tool that we've design, designed. It was originally designed for coaches to lead a team through to say, how can we talk about values right off the start? So, you know, oftentimes coaches will come back and say, we have a problem with X athlete or X parent. Um, but the True Sport Agreement is a really great way, and Danielle described it perfectly as a celebration to say, we're going to need to do X, Y, and Z in terms of athlete skill development, but there's rarely, if ever, a conversation around what we're going to need to do around ethical development or our values and principles. So this is a really great tool that provides, you know, some really great facilitating questions, it sets the scene, and having those values and principles defined right off the start. I mean, I've seen it used in boardrooms for new boards coming together and learning how to um, come together around a shared set of values. I've seen it happen at schools, in classrooms, um, and again, obviously with teams, but it's a really great way to start your season, your term off on the right foot. And as Danielle said, especially around something like a Build-A-Bear, it provides that ongoing example that, you know, what is, what, is it, what is our team really about? Are we about winning or are we about coming together around this shared set of values? So again, that tool is there. We provided the PDF in the handouts, um, but it's also uh, accessible on the TrueSport website, along with different stories and ideas of how it's been used as well. Secondly, this one looks, I'm sure, quite daunting to all of you, but um, many of you will be familiar, and I'm sure with your work through Activate and Motivate, of uh, the long-term athlete development model, which is really quite in line with physical literacy and all of the wonderful pieces we know um, that we want sport to be built on in terms of a physical literacy component. So we've worked quite closely with the Sport for Life group to say, Physical literacy, while being very important, we wanted to make sure that the ethical literacy component was right there side by side. So we developed this very daunting looking matrix, but really what you could do is follow along from the ages and stages of the LTAD model, and line, we lined it up next to the seven true sport principles. So if you take a look at any age and stage and go down, we've provided concrete tool in different ways to bring each one of the true sport principles to life along each of the long-term athlete development stages. And also we've just recently launched 
um, the online version of this long-term athlete development matrix tool on the True Sport website. So if you go in, maybe you're not even familiar with what the long-term athlete development model is or what age and stage you might be involved in or what age and stage you might be coaching. But all you need to do is simply identify, are you coaching males or females? Are you coaching, which age are you coaching? And it will spit you out the column that is relevant to the age group that you're working with. So it's a really great tool. It's a really nice tool to kind of cover off all your bases, especially if you're a new coach or someone who, um, you know, is a little bit overwhelmed with all the technical, tactical things that you are supposed to be doing in a practice. It's a really great way to ground yourself back and say that, yes, of course, the technical, tactical components of a sport experience are important, but the ethical component is equally as important. And again, if you want to think about this idea that, you know, there's a lot of um, talk in the sport community and the sport world around quality sport, ensuring that we're delivering quality sport experiences, I think if you can take this notion of physical literacy, long-term athlete development, and combine it with ethical literacy and something like the true sport values and principles, we really truly believe that this is where you'll see quality sport come to life. Again, we have to remember that as coaches, as leaders in our community, as youth going back into our community. The idea of sport is that we just want to make it a positive experience for everybody involved. We know that youth participation rates in sport drop off drastically as youth head into high school levels. So let's try to make it as fair, fun, and inclusive as we possibly can to ensure that more youth are participating longer in sport. For our last poll of the evening, this is a pop quiz out there for, all, for anyone who's still hanging on. How many true sport principles are there? We listed them briefly at the beginning of the session, but throw out your guesses. And I think we've got just about everybody. Oh, we got most of people got the answer right. I think at 80% and guess seven, there are in fact seven true sport principles. Um, an interesting tidbit to note here that um, when we first started and articulated the true sport principles, there in fact was only six, there was in fact only six true sport principles. We were missing a principle around inclusion, which we just thought. But looking back on the true sport principles, um, inclusion was one of our values, so we really felt the need that it needed to be articulated as a principle as well. So it's a fun little true sport fact for everybody tonight. So really at the end of the day, when you think about true sport, this is how you can help. You can learn more about it. You can embrace it in your community. You can bring it to life in a way that suits you. Hopefully you guys have learned from this webinar here today that that's the benefit. That's the awesome part about true sport is that you can really make it your own. There's no cookie cutter approach. There's no right or wrong answer. It's about values and principles, how you feel inside. So really how you bring that to life is going to be individual. Each person is going to do it a little different and that's what makes true sport so amazing. Um, by learning more about true sport, which is actually what you're all doing here today, by declaring your commitment to true sport and the true sport principles and then bringing them to life. And then lastly, just talking about it and sharing your stories about what you've done and how you've done it and what's been successful for you in your community. That's a really great way of ensuring true sport is being brought to life. And in the end, it really is all about youth. It's all about um, helping people grow into everything that they can and should be. Good sport, sport that's values-based and principle-driven, really can make that happen in our communities. Good sport offers lots of opportunities for our youth to learn as they grow and to ultimately make a great difference in their lives and the lives of other people. So here's a lot of our information here. If you want to join the conversation online, our Facebook site is there, our Twitter handle is there, our website is there. If you have any questions, obviously we would love to hear from you. We're always available online to answer any of your questions or to be in touch. And I guess this is where we can provide questions at this point in the show. <laughs> Thanks so much, Casey. I just want to add uh, a little bit of my own experience with sport. Um, I think that, I guess, how I strive for excellence every day is because I was so involved in sport as a youth and even uh, now. And at the same time, I think the sport builds character within us. And despite the fact that 50% of people have a negative experience with sport, uh, because implementation of true, the true sports principles 
provide that character will likely um, kind of diminish that drop off that happens at high school. And I think these true sport principles can be applied to sport and uh, to life. Um, but besides that, we do have 10 minutes for questions. And I guess the first one I'll address to Danielle. Um, and it was from Charles saying, Danielle, how do you manage, how did you manage to apply all of these seven uh, principles of true sport? How hard was it? So to be able to apply all seven um, principles of true sport, um, you know, it, it's, I'm not going to say it's easy because it's definitely a conscious choice, um, but I think if it's something that you commit to um, daily and make it a part of kind of your daily life, um, it's a lot easier once you get onto, onto the field for, to play sport for sure. Um, so some of the ways, uh, one of the big ones for me, especially when I coach, is always um, the give back part. Um, so looking at what can we do as a team. You know, the community does a lot for us. You know, so whether it's um, the fields that we're using or the people that come out to support us. Um, so I always look to do something um, in regards to giving back. So this year for I'm coaching um, actually at the university that I played at, and one of the things that our team this year has chosen to do is to give back and support um, breast cancer awareness. So we had a player on our team that um, her family was affected by it. So we thought, you know, as a team, that, that's how we're going to give back and how we're going to live the true sport principles. Um, basically, just for the other one, so for Go For It, um, again, that's just as an athlete, you know, you kind of um, hit on it before, but just, you know, always always pushing to, to do your best and um, living that, like I said, you know, not just when I'm on the field, but when I'm off the field as well. Um, playing fair, you know, respecting others, keeping it fun. Those are all kind of choices that, you know, as that as a player, um, I look to do, but now also as a coach that I kind of look to help not only what I'm doing, but to kind of help shape that for what my players are kind of doing as well. Um, so definitely now that, I, that I'm a retired athlete, staying healthy is a big part of my daily life. So just making sure that, that I have good balance, that I'm eating right. Um, you know, and, and at, the end of, at, at the end of the day, you know, can you be a role model for the people around you? Um, so like, like I kind of mentioned before, give back was a big one for us, but I think um, all seven of the true sport principles, if you can live them in your daily life, then, you know, it's, it's that much easier to do it once you're on the field. That's great, Danielle. I would totally agree with you. And I mean, if you look back to that visual image that I posted with the principles inside the sport at its best circle, um, again, we're not naive to think that at all times, at every single level and every single moment of sport, that those seven true sport principles are going to be alive. Um, I mean, that's impossible to think that. But the idea is that, you know, they're going to be ebbing and flowing. At any given time, one principle is going to be a little bit more emphasized than the next principle, given the moment, you know. Maybe there's an, an athlete is nursing an injury, so the stay healthy principle is being emphasized a lot at that particular moment. You know, maybe there's a, a time where that give back principle has really come to play, like the athlete and, and the family that was affected on your team. So. I think if everybody just keeps in mind that these are guiding principles for life, to think, you know, if you can check back and say, you know, how are we doing with these seven true sport principles? And you can think back over the last few times that you've come together as a team and you say, well, you know, we're not, we haven't really been inclusive. We have not really been doing a really great job in ensuring that we're being the most inclusive we can be. Um, I think it provides a little, just a little bit of a check, right, to say, how are we doing? Where are we measuring up against um, how good we know sport can be? So. Uh, I think you did a great job of answering that question, and I think the short story is um, just keep it as a vision, as something that you're sort of working towards, and and a reminder to keep those seven things alive and well. Thanks a lot, um, Danielle and Casey. I also have another question uh, addressing Casey, where they ask, "Do I have to contact True Sport to get my sport program approved uh, to subscribe for the principles?" <laughs> 
Great question. Um, you absolutely don't need to contact um, True Sport, but I mean, the idea is that we ask for people to sign on as a member. I mean, a membership is free. Um, all you're doing is adding your name. I mean, I say all you're doing, but you're making a commitment to these principles. You're saying this is something I believe in. This is something I want to bring to life in my in my sphere of influence. Um, but once you've signed on as a True Sport member, those logos are yours to use. The principles are yours. The language is yours to help you describe what it is you're trying to achieve in your group, in your school, in your community. Um, but if you want to get in touch with us and ask us more questions or you need some more support or you're having trouble finding something on the website, um, of course, I mean, we're always here to sort of help along the way. But at the same time, I mean, what makes True Sport strongest is our membership. So we like to hear from you, whether it's online, by Twitter or Facebook or even if you want to send us an email or show us a short video or something that you're doing um, because that's where we get a lot of our stories, our ideas, our tips, tools, resources or how we know that those tips and tools and resources are helping is that people call in and they tell us about it and they say um, this is really great, this is really working for me, this is really driving, um, helping me to achieve the things I'm driving towards within my community. Perfect and just to address the resources that, that you brought up, is there a toolkit um, that's available to do these kind of projects? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, we had a number of toolkit type resources that we had posted on the website a long time ago, but the feedback from our membership was that um, they were a little intensive. So now what we've done is we've taken those toolkits and we've broken them out into individual tools. You know, top 10 lists, some of the tools and resources we provided in this forum or in this webinar. Um, so if you go to the resource section of our website, you'll see that you can sort it by member type. So are you looking at something that you need to use for your school or something that you'd like to focus more specifically on your facility? Um, and that's sort of how we've managed to sort the resource section of our website from, from here on out. Wonderful. Uh, also, another question addressed towards Danielle. Um, how would, I guess, the uh, questioner or attendee asked, um, because you engage people through a soccer program, um, they're trying to do something similar with their community action project and how would they uh, go about incorporating their true sport principles, whether they have to influence or I guess um, emphasize any specific principles or try to include them all within that one bubble. Yeah, so I think it's going to depend kind of on, on what their, their project is and what they're looking to do. Um, you know, like it, you, for one of the things that I looked at, especially for my Activate in Action project, um, you know, you, you don't have to implement every single true, uh, true sport principle in everything that you do. Um, so, for example, when we looked at doing something with my university soccer team, that was, we, we looked at, you know, just focusing on give back. You know, so sometimes if you narrow your focus, um, that's a great option, but if, if there's a way that you can use all seven true sport principles um, in your programming, then that's a great thing to do. So, for example, what we did for um, the True Sport Player of the Year Award, um, we we kind of sent out the principles on our, on our nomination list, um, but the cool part about it, it was that um, each kind of player that was nominated, there was kind of one true sport principle that was really highlighted in um, in their nomination. So, and that was okay, that if they didn't hit on all seven true sport principles, um, that was fine for us. So, we had one player that um, really made practices fun for her teammates. We had another player that um, really every time, you know, she stepped on the field, um, she was looking to push herself constantly and push her teammates. Um, and then we had another player that was very respectful to the referees. Um, so, I think it's just about finding that right balance for, for what you're looking to do in your program. That's a great answer. I'd also add to that, Danielle, that the feedback that we've had from our membership is that the True Sport pr principles provide awesome theming opportunities. So, you know, if there's a camp that's hosting, you know, a seven-week camp or an eight-week camp, often what they'll come back and tell us is, you know, this week was Go For It week and next week is Play Fair week. And then we had one week where it was a free-for-all and any True Sport principle that we saw, you know, um, a really cute idea and way that we've heard is that they put the onus on the camp campers to say, help us identify true sport behavior. So if you've seen a behavior happening throughout the week, hand out this ribbon or point it out so that we can share those stories. So it's all about highlighting the good and noticing the good things that are happening in sports so that we can start bit by bit crowding out those bad components and the bad things. It's it, and the notion that we want to get it into the water with supply and we want true sport to be the norm. We want that to be the way that sport happens in this country.
Uh, great. We also uh, have another question for either of the panelists. Um, it's from a coach um, who, who has kids who make fun of their opponents and sometimes their teammates. How do I stop this? And I, I've tried to talk to them, um, but they're really young and be would benching them be too harsh? Mm. Maybe I'll throw that over to our coach, Danielle. Sure. Um, yeah, so the, the first thing I would kind of do is just um, explain why that behavior um, isn't okay. And, you know, you can, you can bring it back on to, um, you know, everyone who, who's involved in sport wants to have a good experience. So, you know, if, we, if we're making fun of our, our opponents and you're taking away that good experience for them, and, you know, as an athlete, you would never want that to happen to yourself. Um, so you definitely don't have a right to do that to someone else. Um, I think the true sport agreement could be a great thing that you could use to address your whole team. So, um, and that's a really cool thing about the true sport agreement is that it creates accountability for the players because this is something they all decided um, that they were going to commit to. Um, so one of the things that I didn't mention but we talked a little bit about when I did the true sport agreement was, okay, so what's going to happen um, if one of our teammates aren't? doing these things that we said that are really important for us. You know, so if they aren't respecting our opponents, what's going to happen? Um, so you can literally, if you have that conversation at the beginning of the season, um, then it's kind of on the players themselves. So what may, they might decide, you know, um, maybe if it, if it happened once, then we'll, we'll talk to that player. And But if it happens again, then maybe it is the repercussion is, um, you know, you don't, you don't get to play that game. Um, I'd be curious to just what age that you're you're coaching at, um, because obviously that's going to affect a little bit of the social emotional development and what players are able to understand. Um, but I, if I'd say if it's definitely anything over um, under ten, I think they'd be able to grasp that concept. Um, but yeah, because because as a coach too, you have a responsibility to make sure that that the other team is having a positive experience. Um, so I think it's really important that you're able to have that conversation with the athlete, for sure. I think that's a great answer, Danielle, and I think you're bang on. I mean, we get these types of questions at True Sport a lot, and I think it's about starting the season or starting the term or starting the school year off on the right foot. So the True Sport agreement, that's kind of worth its weight in gold in situations like this where, you know, you don't wait until something happens and then address it. You've already had the conversation up front, so if something does go awry, like Danielle said, there's accountability, and the athletes or the students sort of know what to be expected if they're not sort of following suit because the biggest part of it is with the true sport agreement is that they had a piece of the pie they contribute to working towards that you know they were the ones that stood up and said this is how we think we should treat each other so um, if I think back to when it happened in a school the vice principal very clearly said to us you know this was amazing because when little Johnny started to get off track um, we could easily rein him back in and say you helped us build this what's going on here so I think it's all about from a true sport perspective it's the that idea that if we take that little bit of extra time and and have these conversations at the outset, we'll have less of these kind of fire fi firefighting issues along the way. Perfect. We have time for one more question, and I guess it would be addressed to myself. It's, uh, does Activate have a toolkit? Um, yes, we're currently developing the physical activity and uh, healthy living toolkit, which actually incorporates the true sport principles. And uh, it's a, a great partnership because if once the youth go into their communities and implement these positive projects, what they could do is implement these true sport principles alongside them. And both the youth implementing the project and as well the youth, I guess, participating it, and it uh, will benefit from it. And uh, this will carry on down the line uh, towards the future. And hopefully this can be cyclical type of thing where the youth who are engaged in these projects can implement these principles. And I guess to end it off, uh, you can continue to get involved on the Motivate Canada website uh, or email us at activate at motivatecanada.ca or uh, contact the True Sport um, managers or just anybody on the team uh, and they will help you out as well. You can look at our Facebook and Twitter and uh, Lastly, once again, I'd like to thank the OTF Foundation and the Government of Ontario Sport and Recreation Community Fund for um, funding this webinar series, and I uh, hope to see you soon. Thanks a lot, Casey and Danielle.
Have a wonderful evening. Do you have recording this?